Hi everyone and welcome to another Monday Memo. Now on today's episode I'd like to talk about the fact that generally in finance and accounting we want to be able to help our organisations make better and more sustainable decisions. In fact we pride ourselves on presenting our ideas clearly but sometimes those insights and expertise seem to just fall on deaf ears. Now if you ever found yourself in that position you know where no matter how rationally um, or how completely you present the data uh, your numbers, the recommendations, uh, the managers and leaders we speak with give us what's known as resistance. Now there's a number of telltale signs with resistance and it doesn't always happen but when it does it can be very frustrating and puzzling. I mean at the end of the day aren't we meant to have the best interest of our organizations at heart? Uh, for instance if we find a way to improve margins let's say by reducing the amount of concessions or discounting we're doing and when we're given our recommendations, leaders or managers appear stubborn or irrational. Even though we're trying to improve bottom line performance, such resistance can come in like subtle or obvious forms. But in general, us technical types like accountants or finance professionals, we tend to be so bogged down in the numbers and the rationality of our cases that we sometimes fail to pick up on the more emotional cues around resistance. And that's what resistance is. It's an emotional reaction. So now you're facing into resistance when you end up presenting the data or justifying your recommendations more loudly and forcibly. When you become impatient with decision makers, ask for more detail, they're moralizing or questioning your methods, you know, like what does the pricing team think of what you're doing? Or did you involve marketing when making your model assumptions? Other scenarios are when you get agreement from a decision maker that They'd like to go ahead uh, with your ideas, but the timing's not quite right at the moment for them to implement it. When you're getting told your models or projections are impractical, um, or they lack practicality, or even that it's just intellectualizing. It's an academic exercise. Or one of the more difficult ones, you get si silence, you get the expression, I'm not surprised, or just lack of objection, because silence doesn't imply consent. You know, resistance is just a natural reaction to people facing up to tough, organizational problems or decisions they're going to have to make that might end up meaning they lose a bit of their hard-won control or making them even more exposed more vulnerable because that's what tends to happen when making unpopular actions or confronting some reality that they've been avoiding now in our roles in finance and accounting we can see broadly across the business so we might see things because of our broader perspective that managers are unable to see they're not that they're not smart people of course they're smart people it's just they might be too close to the problem to see it as clearly as we can so there might be a clear and obvious need for our help we might have the influence to get at the table bring amazing insights but we can still come up against this resistance and if we do it's going to stop us making as big an impact or adding as much value as potentially we could so there's a number of steps we can take to overcome resistance uh, the first one is just accept that it can happen but not always and just don't take it personally right be aware of it like in the examples i shared already you, you know trust in your gut feeling uh, about what someone is really saying to you uh, and ironically the third step you know resistance is all about learning it's initiating a learning process to help you and the decision makers move forward on the right things more effectively so it's actually a good thing to happen and the next step is it's our job to help those leaders or managers to verbalize their resistance into a sort of neutral type language so that we can overcome it and create value for their businesses. We might say if the decision makers exhibiting like low attention or low energy, we might say some, you know, you look as if you've other things on your mind and have low energy for this project and see if you can open up to help verbalize the resistance they're facing. And when they do that, shut up and listen, just let them respond. And as a bonus sort of final step, what I suggest is if the conversation is getting caught up around what is wrong or reasons for being right about a particular problem, instead ask for solutions to move things forward. Or if you're feeling really brave, ask, are we here to solve a problem or create a new future for ourselves? You know, at the end of the day, these are just very practical steps uh, that we can use to overcome resistance and make sure our insights and recommendations are delivering the impact that they're capable of. And that's why we bring on guest mentors to our show, is to share with you their hard-won lessons, those tough situations they've been at, 
where and where they've uncovered those practical steps that can work to move things forward that can develop influence that can ensure there's an impact and ultimately they're keen to share them with you so that you can have a fun rewarding and successful career in accounting and finance so if you like this episode uh, please share it with your colleagues your friends uh, you can also check out our guest mentor interviews and the detailed show notes that go with them and the other resources at sitnshow.com uh, we're also available on the major platforms itunes stitcher youtube and really it's all about trying to unlock ways where we can help each other's community to have fun rewarding and successful careers in accounting and finance so until next time take care of yourselves and let's keep on building our strength in the numbers